So a B cell response is characterized by the presence of antibodies. And these antibodies can be of different antibody class or isotypes, which is IgM, IgG, IgA, or IgE. Now, in the presence of an antigen that is uh, identified as a danger signal, these antibodies all have that specificity. They all bind independently of the isotype class. They all bind the same antigen because the variable region is the same. The B cells and the dendritic cells can see the whole antigen, but they process it and they will present the appropriate T cell epitope to the T cell. When the Th cell becomes a Th2 and produces mainly interleukin-4 through the costimulatory signals, the first interaction will mature the plasma cells into the B cells into plasma cells. And the, the plasma cells are the ones responsible for the secretion of these antibodies. Now, in the presence of continuous stimulation from the B cell that is specifically identifying the antigen that would be a drug and presents the epitope to the T cell, these T cells can become any one of the different Th phenotypes with the appropriate co-stimulatory factors and different cytokine production. These are the responsible pathways for creating an isotype switch from the IgM all the way it could be all the way to IgE or IgA. Let's take a look at how the isotype is defined in each one of these productions of antibodies. We have an antigen that could be a drug or it could be any kind of antigen. When the B cell reacts to it, there's going to be a change in the variable region that identifies the antigen, but there's also a rearrangement of the genes for the heavy chain. And that's the one that's going to define which class of antibody or which isotype we are going to be seeing. In the genetic sequence of the B cell, we have always the IgM, and the IgD are placed together and they are the first genes. I have put here an oval just before the rectangle. The oval signifies the genetic sequence that's called the switch sequence for mu in this case. The construct for the, for the constant region of the IgM, which is identified as C mu gene, uh, follows the S mu. The constant for IgD, the C delta, does not have a switch gene before. The B cells can actually express IgM and IgD on the same cell at the same time. This is not the case for the rest of the isotypes. The rest of the isotypes are ordered from left to right and they all have a genetic sequence for a switch just before the genetic sequence of the construct. And this is what allows the B cell to be able to switch or change from one isotype to another. The direction of the change is always going from the IgM towards the IgA2 as the last one. In other words, a, a B cell could actually potentially switch to an IgG1 and then switch again and mature to an IgE. But the opposite direction cannot happen. The reason is explained on how this switch happens. The switch genes are identified in this, in this genomic, genomic sequence of the B cell and the they can gather together as shown in here. So two switch genes identify. In this case, we're looking at switch to an IgE. So when this is driving the response to IgE, the two switch genes gather together and the ring that is the DNA that is not going to be used of the other C 
sequences for the other isotypes is spliced out, is cut out, and that genetic sequence is no longer part of the sequence of the B cell. Now, this B cell has the variable region, diversity region, the junction region, and the constant gene for the epsilon or IgE isotype. This particular cell has now recombined the genes and it has switched to an IgE and it has spliced out all the other genetic material. This is what allows a transcription of the RNA that's already spliced. It's already for IgE and the translation is into an IgE antibody. So what actually makes this particular recombination identify which switching we need to do? There, there are several different examples and many publications on this. I am presenting here an example of an Ig class switching in humans. You will find a lot of publications in rodent cells. I prefer to focus this on humans. And it depends on what kind of assay conditions these publications have. So oftentimes you will see discrepancies or you will find that one particular cytokine could be identified with a particular isotype switch and in another publication is different. But it's because the B cells are uh, cult cultured and tested under different conditions. So what I did was to gather as much information as I could and I am presenting you a summary of how I interpret the information. Basically, what I found is a TH2 response, basically with interleukin-4, is going to stimulate the isotype switch to IgG1, 2, 4, and IgE. This is very, very typical response in atopic conditions, in allergies, in anaphylaxis. And it can go from IgG1 all the way to IgE. Sometimes these reactions, especially with some anaphylactic reactions, this can be so fast that we can only identify IgE from the first encounter, let's say in a peanut allergy uh, patient. But in other cases, we can actually see the progression. Another Th2 response characterized by interleukin-5 has been found to promote the switch to IgA. The Th1 response driven by interferon can stimulate or drive the switch to IgG3, while TGF-beta promotes IgA and interleukin-10 promotes the switch to IgG1, IgG3. In addition, I found that some of these cytokines could actually cause a negative switch and in a way balance or make sure that while it is stimulating, for instance, IL-4 stimulates IgG1, 2, and 4, it will actually decrease or stop the switching to IgG3. Interferon gamma would actually have a negative uh, switch for IgG1 and IgE, and TGF beta will have that effect for IgG3. So depending on the interaction from the T cells and on the particular cytokines that are being driven by that interaction is the, the rationale for having the different isotypes. But definitely what we need to remember is that each individual will react differently to the different antigens and if it is a drug to the different drugs. Some individuals may be seeing this with a more predominant interleukin-4 response and others could be having more of an interferon gamma response. So this is idiosyncratic and the isotypes characterization of the antibodies may help us in identifying the type of response. When we're working with anti-drug antibodies, what we do care is that there is an anti-drug antibody, if it's a memory response or not, and if this response 
could have serious safety consequences.